Hi guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Bouncing audio events is something that a lot of people and a lot of users in Studio One appreciate because it's an easy way to consolidate your audio edits, uh, crossfades that you've done and so forth, and then move that as a whole easily across the arrangement timeline. But there's also a different approach to that, which is non-destructive, meaning all of your changes are revertible and that's merging. All of the differences between merging and bouncing are what we want to explore today. So I spent a little bit of time editing this drum roll here and I pieced that together with several crossfades as you can see. For example here I have different fades like so and also another one here which is more linear. Also notice how I can adjust the crossfade on the left and on the right separately by holding down the option key or the alt key. Already going straight to the good stuff, as you can tell. And uh, this is what it sounds like so far. Also, on the last event, I added a mix verb, but only for the last snare here, uh, to give that a little bit more width um, and to really end this drum roll with a bang. So uh, let's say that I want to consolidate all of this so that I can move it as one drum roll to anywhere where it's required in my arrangement. Well, what most users would do in this situation is select everything and then hit Ctrl and B on Windows or Command and B on a Mac. That's the keyboard shortcut for bounce selection. You can also right click and then go to event and bounce selection. But this is much faster. And if you haven't used this keyboard shortcut, you should definitely start using it. There's a couple of advantages to this and a couple of disadvantages that I want to talk about. So the advantage is that you can now edit this as a whole. Like for example, you could right click it, show the gain envelope, and now you could use the paint tool for instance to you know, just draw in a couple of adjustments that you want to make. And it would work beautifully because you don't have all these crossfades and all these separate events in the way anymore. Another advantage is that this reverb effect we had on the last snare is already rendered in. So you're really committed to it and it doesn't eat up any more processing in your song. And uh, it's just a nice looking event ready to be moved anywhere. The disadvantage is that this is a destructive process, meaning if you want to revert this at any point to maybe adjust the crossfades a little bit more, the only thing you can do is yeah, hit Command and Z on a Mac or Ctrl and Z on Windows for undo a bunch of times and then uh, zoom in to make the required changes. And in some scenarios that can be a bit of a problem because the undo list is resetting itself once you close the song and when you open it up again you can't hit undo anymore. Um, so fortunately there's also a different approach to consolidate your different events if you want to keep everything non-destructive, fully revertible at all times. And that alternative is called merging. So you select everything and instead of hitting Command and B on a Mac or Control and B on Windows like before, we are going to hit the G key. This looks very similar to the bouncing process that we've seen before, but you can already tell there's something different about this. For instance, we have this little chain icon at the bottom of the event indicating that there's different sliced events glued together to one part as we call it. And you can double click that and then you see inside of here we have all of these separate event blocks still that we can fully edit to our liking. We also have the event effect right here still. So all the processing is still happening in real time. Now this can be fantastic of course if you want to keep everything fully revertible but keep in mind if you apply a lot of event effects, Melodyne maybe or Vocaline, all of that still has to happen in real time when you have merged events which can be quite CPU intensive. You also don't get a clip gain envelope for everything because once again this is just a container for the separate events. Uh, but on the plus side you can hit Shift and G at any point to just unmerge everything. Very very useful. And also you can do shared duplicate copies like ghost copies just like the ones that are available for instrument parts. I love this feature. Let me show you what that's about. So we have this consolidated audio part here consisting of multiple audio events. And if I now go ahead and duplicate this, I could usually go ahead and drag this over to wherever I need it and then hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on Windows PC. But what I can do instead is hold down Command on a Mac or Control on Windows. And you can see that it now says create a shared copy right here. 
And if I now let go, you'll see this cute little ghost icon right here, indicating that this is a shared copy. And now all of the changes that I'm doing, for example, to the crossfades here or to the gain, watch the wave preview closely in the arrangement, that's being applied to all of them at once, right? These changes are applied to everything that uses the same audio material. It can be extremely useful if you have a change that you want to make to your chorus vocals, for instance, and you want that change to be applied to chorus two and chorus three as well. But keep in mind that this is exactly how clip gain envelopes work on bounced events too. So if you just bounce the event as shown before and duplicate that with the usual method, you could use clip gain envelopes to draw in curves and stuff like that. And all of these changes are going to be applied on every event that references the same clip. And this gives you even more control in the way. So there's really different scenarios where merging and where bouncing is more useful. If you haven't been aware of one of these methods or their inherent advantages, then I hope you're gonna start using them today. And thank you for watching.